Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Noon Repass is on the run to clear her name in the action thriller Unlocked. Alice was seen to by Noon Repass as a CIA interrogator who has been quietly working in London after she held herself responsible for failing to stop a bombing in Paris. Alice is called upon on a special assignment to question an apprehended courier, but realises that she's being used to aid a potential attack. Now Alice must unlock the truth and doesn't know who to trust as the CIA CIA, led by John Malkovich's Hunter, and MI5, led by Tony Collette's Emily Knowles, try to capture her and must race against time to prevent a biological attack on London. I saw Unlocked at a very unfortunate period of time. It had already been out for several weeks by this point, and by the time I did catch up with it, it was in the aftermath of the recent terrorist attacks we've had in the UK. And as I was watching the movie, there were certain points where I did feel a little bit uncomfortable because it did hit a little bit too close to home, especially in terms of the premise. But I think that's less to do with the film itself and more just particularly that point in time. I don't think even the filmmakers could have imagined how unintentionally relevant their film really was when they first rolled cameras on it in 2015. The reason the movie was so delayed in getting to cinema screens was because they had to reconfigure its ending and that required getting the actors together when their schedules were free and that was over a year later. We'll get to those later on because that's a big, big issue with the movie. But in many respects, it did remind me faintly of the Idris Elba movie, The Take, from last year, which also had a very uncomfortable relationship with real-world events at that moment. Unlocked isn't quite as bad in that regard. It's pretty much only fulfilling its obligations as a, you know, a movie in this genre, in that it's got a stock plot but it changes the detail so that it feels a little bit more contemporary and a bit more ripped from the headlines. That's simply what Unlocked is doing, it just accidentally feels prescient. And as such, I really don't attribute those feelings to the movie itself because the movie is extremely routine. In many respects, Unlocked is only doing the bare minimum as a piece of the action genre. There is one exception to this, there is one person who is genuinely trying in this movie, and that's Numi Rapace. Numi Rapace, I think, is a great performer, and I think she's really underappreciated. And when Prometheus was coming out, I think we all predicted that she was going to go on to have big things happen to her, and that hasn't really happened. If you look at her career choices recently, it seems like she's moved into very direct-to-video territory in a lot of low-budget movies, and that's a real shame because she deserves better than that. She deserves movies that are frankly better than Unlocked, that is very much on that kind of level, especially because she's grounded the character in a very believable way. She plays this ex-CIA interrogator who blames herself for not delivering the intelligence in time to stop a Paris bridge bombing. And this is an example of the movie again straying into territory that's a little bit too close to reality in that the movie actually has to ADR in a line at that point to say it's not that Paris bombing, the one that happened in real life, it's another one that was fictional and invented for the storyline of this movie. But of course, while they were in post-production, real life intervened. And so she's been living out quietly in London and then she gets pulled back into the fold and you completely believe her as this very intelligent, very astute, but quite formidable presence when she needs to be. The problem is that the script keeps letting Rapace down. The film requires Alice, the character, to be fooled on numerous occasions. And this got very irritating to me as I was watching the film because, okay, I can understand her being duped once. I can understand it in terms of having to kick off the plot because that first twist, if you hadn't seen it in the trailer and didn't know that was the premise of the movie, that would genuinely catch you off guard. And it was something I hadn't seen before in a lot of movies like this. 
unlike the twist later in the movie. And the movie keeps doing these twists and Alice keeps trusting characters that the audience is virtually screaming at her to not trust because they clearly aren't. And so this is a real problem with the movie in that the audience is far smarter than the main character and on a certain level that's to do with the movie's plotting in that it's very predictable in that regard but at certain points it seems like the character doesn't really have a lot of awareness of her situation she seems to misplace those very important set of skills and it's a shame because Rapace is desperately trying to get this movie to work you can tell she's really committed to this movie what a shame then that absolutely no one else is. While I was watching Unlocked, it became increasingly clear that this was very symptomatic of the sort of filmmaking that I've seen a lot of recently at the mid-budget and low-budget levels of action filmmaking in that they feel very much made by committee with about a dozen executive producers on them. And as such, they have no real personality. They feel extremely generic. I think the reason that this is, and the way that I can articulate it best, is that they feel like spreadsheet action movies. In that the way that a lot of movies are financed and sold these days is that they give you a cast list of who's going to be in it, and, you know, it's an action movie and it's going to have these stars in it, and it's going to come out on these dates. You know, it... It feels like one of those kind of movies where you're watching the film and you've been sold a bill of goods and technically you've got it, but it just feels like you're reading the list. It doesn't really feel like it's got, you know, any kind of substance by itself. It's a very strange feeling watching a lot of these these movies and I've seen it so many times in the sort of direct-to-video end of the spectrum. There is not a lot of difference between something like Unlocked and, you know, one of those movies that has Bruce Willis in it for a day and then they slap his face on the cover to sell copies on DVD shelves. And it's especially understandable why a movie like Unlocked, which did get a fairly major theatrical release in the UK, is going mostly to on-demand markets in the US because despite the big name cast and the producer credits, it feels like something that would be on the shelves of Blockbuster if it still existed. It's a movie that exists to fill up red boxes and rental stores and Netflix rather than something that needs to be seen in a cinema. You look at the cast list and you think you're getting a legitimate high quality movie and really, you're just getting the shell of one. You can just feel the sort of accountancy of every single decision in the movie. And it has the same imagination as if, as if it was scripted by that same accountant. In that every single plot twist in this movie can be seen for miles in advance if you've ever seen any kind of action movie like this. It does have a kind of twisty, convoluted plot and it tries to throw you off the scent. And even though the movie was doing a lot of that, and at certain points there were moments where I didn't feel like I knew entirely what was going on, there was still something in the back of my mind going, I've seen this movie enough times to know that this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and I wonder who X is going to be at the end of the movie. Every single box is ticked by this movie and there are no surprises in it after the initial sort of plot instigating moment. You look at uh, uh, you know that assembly of people like John Malkovich, Tony Collette, Orlando Bloom, Michael Douglas, big, big names. Hell, I've even seen a movie that's exactly like this with Michael Douglas before. It was called The Sentinel. It wasn't very good then either. But you look at those big name actors and they're clearly just there to cash in a paycheck. Every single one of those supporting performers is purely there, you know, 
for a day or so to fill in their roles, for example. Michael Douglas is a consummate pro, for example, but there's nothing he can really add to the archetypal mentor role. He's the mentor to Alice, he's the one that tries to get her back into the field, and he's only in a handful of scenes throughout the movie, and he's not really in most of it, because he's probably only shot it across maybe, maybe the best part of a week, tops? It, there's nothing that he can really add to that role, it's just there for the sake of having a big name to sell it to financers and put on the poster. John Malkovich's character is based almost entirely in America. Most of the movie is set in London, so he spends his first portion of the movie being briefed about what's happening, this big exposition scene, and then he'll appear intermittently mostly via phone calls. That's how John Malkovich appears in this movie. He practically Skypes his rock performance in because really he doesn't need to be even be there. His character is purely expository and Again, it's an example of bringing the char uh, that sort of character actor to do exactly what they you know usually do that sort of archetypal what they do in the John Malkovich he is John Malkovich, and he is very agitated and getting angry and yelly in that way that John Malkovich does, but it doesn't really, you know, satisfy, because for 98% of the running time, he's not actually sharing the screen with any of his co-stars. It, I was genuinely surprised when he did actually show up in the same shot as one of the other actors, because otherwise I would have thought they just added him in completely separately from everyone else. The only two people that seem to be a little bit more invested in what's going on is Tony Collette, first of all, who is playing the MI5 chief, and clearly her performance is based on Judi Dench as M. You can tell they're going for a little bit of a sub-James Bond vibe, and certainly Collette's look in this movie with her short, cropped, you know, white hair looks very reminiscent of Dench in the in the Brosnan Bond movies especially, which makes sense of course, because this is directed by Michael Apted, who directed The World Is Not Enough. The other person that appears to be actually, you know, caring about what's going on, but not a huge amount, is Orlando Bloom, and his production company was involved with this film. And Orlando Bloom if you look to the posters in the promotional campaign for this movie, you might get the mistaken impression that his character is a co-lead, because he's on all the posters. And so I was rather surprised when I was roughly around 30 to 40 minutes into this film, and Orlando Bloom had only just shown up at that point. Bloom plays a thief that Rapace just happens to stumble upon when she goes back to her apartment, and he sort of tags along for the second act of the movie that's almost like an extended cameo appearance. He's really not in this film for very long at all, and frankly that's probably a blessed relief because he plays the character as a cockney, and <laughs> believe me, his accent is really, really bad. It's genuinely quite embarrassing stuff, and Bloom he has to deliver these lines in this accent of really cringeworthy material like, Oh, I lost my friend in the 7-7 bombings. I'm going to tag along for that exact reason. R really? Again, nice and classy movie. You know, trying to call to, you know, real-life events like 7-7 or 9-11, which is also referenced in this movie. I think you actually see footage of that event. Can we please stop doing that in these kind of movies to give them a sense of credibility? I really don't need to be reminded of real-life atrocities while I'm watching what is really a genuinely dumb action thriller. And you know, as an action fan, I could forgive it for a few of those things, like the routine plot or the slumming actors if it at least delivered on what it should do, which is, suffice to say, the action department. But Unlocked is frankly mediocre at best when it comes to that. 
I mentioned before that this movie was directed by a Bond director, Michael Apshead, who has numerous credits to his name. He has been working for decades now. And yes, he's had stinkers like the Jennifer Lopez movie Enough and so forth, but he's a more than capable set of hands for this kind of movie. And yet, even with that expectation going into the film, it really doesn't deliver at all. The action scenes at certain points seem very clumsily staged. There are moments that happen just slightly off camera, or the you know they they don't really capture it in the frame properly, and it just makes it feel like it's a very uneven experience. And again, Rapace does seem like she can genuinely fight. It does seem like she can genuinely hold her own in battle, but the movie doesn't really give you a chance to see that. There's a very close quarters fight in a laundry room edited to hell and back and yet these two police officers actually get the drop on her to a certain extent. She even gets tasered. The, she has to be saved at this point in the movie and that lets the film down and a lot of the action scenes don't really have any kind of imagination. There's no Meryl beats that you would want from an action movie. There's nothing that really sets this apart from numerous others in this genre doing the exact same things. The film tries to go for this very Bourne-like vibe, but the fight scenes in most of the Bourne movies are far more nail-biting than anything you'll see in this movie. And believe me, this movie makes its Bourne death very felt by the fact that it just feels like they've literally told the composer just nick bits of the score from the later Bourne movies. Which brings us nicely to the matter of the film's ending, which is blatantly a reshoot and would have been immediately obvious even if I hadn't known about that going in, because you get three quarters of the way through the film and suddenly it feels like the climax of a completely different movie and not just because characters disappear but also because we have this football stadium and it's just barely been established in the rest of the movie and suddenly it's the setting for the big showdown and the movie decides to have its major reveal its big twist at this point and it's the most rote cliche thing you could have possibly thought of I was genuinely hoping that I hadn't spotted it very early on. No, I was wishing it wasn't that. Anything other than the option that they chose. But nope, it is the most obvious thing that they could have done. And to just to compound the issue, it makes no sense. This character has a speech that is meant to explain their motivations and why they've been doing what they've been doing. And you don't believe it for a second. Nothing about it holds up. If this is meant to be an improvement on the original ending, I'd hate to see what they had the first time around. And just to make things worse, in the epilogue, they have the temerity to set up for a sequel. Who's going to want a sequel to this? No one's going to see this in the first place. Hell, I think most of the actors will be hoping that no one has watched this. And suffice to say, Unlocked is definitely something that you should probably avoid. If you're in need of a quick action fix, it's just barely passable. It's a real time waster of a movie that has no identity of its own. It's one of those films where any of the actors could have been replaced with someone else and it'd be exactly the same. They bring nothing to the movie and it just feels insanely workmanlike. It just feels like everyone is doing their jobs except for the one of entertaining you unfortunately. Despite the all-star cast and its credentials unlocked is as generic as action movies go and is so routine you've seen countless variations of it before. An obvious born knockoff with every twist and turn being easy to spot way in advance despite its convoluted plot, especially if you're a genre fan. Rapace gives it her best but the script lets both her and the character down as the film makes her look like a fool and the supporting cast are clearly there to pick up their checks and stock rolls, although there's some amusement to be had from Orlando Bloom's strange middle act appearance with a dodgy Cockney accent. Even the action from former Bond director Michael Apted isn't up to much, and the obviously reshot finale makes absolutely no sense from any angle. Just leave this one locked up.
If you like this review, you can spy my Patreon, where you can see my videos early, among other perks. But until next time, I'm Matthew Burke, fading out.